Daar kan ons op die wetsontwerp op die voorkoming en bestrijding van haatmisdade commentaar geleverd word. Baie kritiek is al daarover uitgesprek. Ek verwelkom nou vir Sanja Boorman van Lawyers for Human Rights om ons meer te vertel. Sanja, welkom. Why on earth is there an attempt to enact new legislation whereas there are already acts and laws against hate speech? So I think first of all it's important to, to say that civil society is very pleased with the introduction of this bill. And the reason for that is that hate crime has been a problem in our society for a very long time. Um, and it's an ongoing problem and, and it's an urgent problem. And so we're very pleased that this bill is seeing the light of day and that it's available for public comment. Um, and in the bill, we, we, we need to realize that what it gives us for the very first time in South African law is a proper definition of hate crime. And so even though hate crime is something that people often speak about, you often hear people referring to hate crime, it's not something that has been legally defined in our law until now. The hate speech provision, which is contained in the bill, is somewhat controversial. And, and I think that you yourself has now, have now referred to the fact that it's already drawing quite a bit of criticism. Uh, and the reason for some of this is that it goes far beyond racism, the critics say. Its victims include people who are um, subjected to bias or intolerance based on, and just list a few of these uh, bases, race, gender, sex, ethnicity, um, sexual orientation, religion, culture, language, birth, disability, occupation or trade, mm. which uh, would mean that one can't even crack jokes at journalists anymore. My goodness, <laughs> is this not way excessive? I think that what, what is concerning for us about the hate speech provision in this bill is not really the, the, the list of grounds that you've, just, that you've just mentioned. It's more the way in which the hate speech provision is, is phrased and the language in which it is couched. So we're concerned that it's, that it's really much too broad in that it not only targets uh, communication in the public domain, but it also targets communication in the in the more private domain. Social and, media. Yes, correct. Social media will be included, and you know we think that that maybe takes it a little bit too far. We're also not convinced that cr the criminalisation of hate speech will have a very transformative effect on society, and we think that there may be um, better ways to deal with hate speech as opposed to hate crime, which is of course something that refers to acts and and a conduct that is already criminalised in our Law. Yes, so how does this act deal with a crime that you commit against somebody because of one of these characteristics of that person? If, you know, if a person is killed in a, an act of domestic violence or a person is killed because they are white or black or gay, uh, is that crime punished more severely? Yes, in a way it is punished more severely. Um, when there is a minimum sentence applicable to what we refer to as the base crime, the court will have the jurisdiction to impose that sentence and the hate element or the prejudice motivation um, will be considered an aggravating factor on the basis of, of, of the facts of the case. Okay, so you know that some skeptics would say, listen, we're not even um, administering existing laws properly. Many criminals go unpunished. The prosecution rate is frightfully low, even in cases that should be as easy to solve as a murder. Why now add an additional layer of legislation instead of getting the courts and the police investigations correct? The thing about hate crime is that when, you, it, it, when it's investigated and when it's prosecuted, currently the way the system is structured, that hate element or that prejudice element becomes invisible. There's no law that requires police officers to gather evidence about the motive, and there's no law requiring a prosecutor in a, court, um, in a criminal court to lead evidence about that hate um, motivation. And so that hate element and the fact that we have hate crime in our society becomes invisible and disappears. So how would this act, if it becomes law, be used by an aggrieved person like Peter Grunewald, who just spoke on the insert a moment earlier, if indeed after Julius Malema's very hateful utterances against white people this week, somebody goes and says, you are white, you don't belong here, I'm going to shoot you, and then shoots that person. I mean, would this be the kind of law uh, that can be invoked uh, in the prosecution of, of such a criminal? Well, yes, I think that that is what is being envisaged by this law at this point in time. However, we do feel that that hate speech provision is too broad. 
And um, in this round of public comments, the bill, as you have said, is now open for public comment, we need to look very carefully at how we can tighten that provision up. Um, the concern also is that if we leave that provision very wide, it will be challenged and uh, it's going to stay controversial and it will delay the promulgation of this bill, which will ultimately be very bad news for, for victims of hate crime that affect people in a very urgent way and across a wide variety of, of vulnerabilities. Senator, so how um, does this act compare to what exists in other democracies, I almost said other Western democracies, and then I, and then I <laughs> thought the better of it. I mean, is this in line with the legal thinking um, these days? So there are other jurisdictions that, that have criminalized um, hate crime and obviously hate speech as well. Um, but I think that there are some differences in the way that, that it's been phrased, especially when we look at hate speech. A lot of the time, hate speech is criminalized where the utterances are in a public domain. And as I've mentioned, uh, this particular uh, provision that we've got in the bill at the moment will also apply to, to utterances and communication in the, in the private sphere, maybe on a one-on-one on -on -one basis. So we need to think about how to regulate that a little bit better. Okay, so has any jurisdiction figured out how to police an act like or a law like like this? But surely, I mean, what is said on Twitter is very hard to regulate. Why will we succeed where others have so abysmally failed? I think that is the that is the challenge with this hate speech provision: is how will we how will we couch it? How will we structure it in a way that will make it practicable and make it work and make it usable and and relevant to our everyday lives um, in a way that doesn't. Uh, curb freedom of speech in a way that is that is unconstitutional. When it comes to hate crimes, however, I don't think that it necessarily requires anything new or different from the police. These are we're talking about um, acts that are already criminalised in our law: murder, rape, damage to property, uh, these kinds of things that are in any event already being investigated by police officers. They just now sometimes have to investigate the motive where it is alleged that that motive is hate or prejudice. Tell us a little bit uh, briefly about the penalties envisaged in this act. So when it comes to hate speech, um, the penalty for a first time perpetrator will be a three year prison sentence. So a prison sentence not exceeding three years um, and a fine um, or the prison sentence or the fine. And for subsequent or second, third, fourth time offenders, there will be a prison sentence of at least 10 years or less, depending on what the court decides, and again, with a fine or the prison sentence or the fine. When it comes to, to, to the hate crimes, it's slightly different. Uh, courts have a very wide jurisdiction to look at the facts of a case and to impose any sentence that the criminal law currently allows. And then in certain instances, you have to regard the, um, the hate or prejudice element as aggravating. Um, the bill will also amend the existing uh, minimum sentencing framework to a certain extent. Um, and that requires a, a, a very careful and close examination as well. Thank you so much. Thanks. Dit was Sonja Bornmann.